So today let's talk about the worst keto-friendly low-carb foods. Now, when we talk about keto-friendly, we're really talking about low-carb. But just because something is low-carb doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy. So let's go down the list and we'll chat about each one. First one is soy protein isolate. It's one of the worst proteins, uh, very low fat, high concentrated protein, very damaging to the liver. Uh, it's going to be GMO, okay? So it's gonna have glyphosate. But I've had quite a few people come in the office after consuming this type of protein with a lot of gallbladder and liver problems. Um, so it's not a high quality protein. It's very, very cheap. It's in a lot of keto-friendly foods. It's in a lot of those breakfast bars and protein bars, and even certain diets use this as their protein mixture. Well, then we have casein. This is milk protein. So first of all, you're rarely, if ever, going to find a grass-fed version of casein. It's usually uh, from cows that consume grains that were GMO. So on the insulin index, which are non-carbohydrate type foods like protein, for example, uh, this would be a lot higher because when you have low fat protein, it can spike insulin a lot more. Uh, next thing is maltitol. This is a sugar alcohol that seems to create the most digestive problems. You see it in a lot of sugar-free candy, sugar-free chocolate, uh, especially for diabetics, but it's pretty high on the glycemic index. It's like 50 something. Next thing is aspartame. Uh, you know about that. That interferes with your gut flora. There's been some studies that show that it can increase insulin resistance, even though it's sugar-free. Processed cheese, okay, that you would get at certain restaurants. Quite a few of the cheeses that you see on the aisle of the grocery store are processed. Not healthy. They're, they come from milk and cows that are not going to be grass-fed. You'd have to go to a health food store to get high quality cheese. And the stuff that I like is the grass-fed organic, especially uh, cheese from Europe. Next thing is the processed meats. Now realize that pretty much all meats are processed, but I'm talking about the ones that you'd get at the grocery store, which are common commercial processed meats, like the lunch meats, hot dogs, bacon, the deli meats, the sausage from animals that are factory farmed, a lot of preservatives, nitrates, you want to do organic meats, meats without hormones, grass-fed, rancid nuts. Let's say, for example, you have some peanuts or walnuts that have been sitting in your cabinet for a very long time, and when you consume them, they're very rancid. Not very healthy because the omega-6 fatty acids, which are very unstable, oxidized, and you don't, you don't want to consume those. Next thing is margarine. Well, it's keto-friendly. It's low-carb, right? When they uh, did studies on epilepsy for children, uh, one of the fats that they used was margarine. Uh, yeah, it induces ketosis, but it's not very healthy. And just to point out, the benefit of lowering your carbs is huge because it's gonna lower insulin, and most people have high insulin. But why not take it to the next level and use ingredients that are quality? Iceberg lettuce. The thing about that is just basically it's empty, there's not much nutrition. One half of a cup of kale equals 10 cups of iceberg lettuce. So you'd have to consume a tremendous amount of it to get anything at all. And then you have uh, doing what's called dirty keto, where you're going to a fast food restaurant and you're ordering the meat without the bun, for example. Um, well, when you consume that meat or the chicken, it is low carb, it's protein, but those animals are fed a lot of GMO grains, so you're not getting the quality. Uh, pork rinds. Now, Make sure you don't get the version that has the MSG. If you can get pork rinds without MSG, it's a lot better. But monosodium glutamate has the ability to spike insulin by 300%. Then we have vegetable oils, okay? Which are not really vegetable oils, they're seed oils. An average American will consume six and a half liters or 11 pints of cooking oil per person every single year. That's a lot of GMO oils, I'm talking about soy oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, canola. They're GMO, very inflammatory. There's some links to insulin resistance and we're consuming tremendous amounts versus in the past, we consume a lot more saturated fats. Now we switch to unsaturated fats. They're not healthier, but they're keto friendly. Okay, then we have corn fiber. It could be non-GMO, I don't know. 
but I have found that it does create a lot of bloating in people. So I don't like this ingredient right here. And again, I don't even know the quality of corn that they use. So it's kind of a mystery and it's very hard to find out um, the ingredients within this and how they process it. It's kind of a secret thing. And then we have farm-raised fish and factory farm meats. The main thing is what they feed these animals. Um, they're feeding them GMO grains, unfortunately, and other things for another video. A lot of times you're gonna see low-fat dairy as being a GMO, but of course it's not gonna be on the label, um, so it's not non-GMO. So there's probably gonna be some glyphosate, which is an herbicide in there. Now, the thing is that um, on the insulin index, the lower fat you go with the protein, the higher you spike insulin. So you don't wanna do the uh, low-fat dairy you don't wanna do the egg whites. You wanna do the whole egg. You wanna do dairy with the whole milk, just make sure it's quality. All right guys, there's the list and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.